Hey everyone, good morning and welcome to the homestead. Cynthia here and today we're going to be talking about creepy crawlies, lice and mites on chickens. So please stick around. So before we go out into the poultry yard and actually take a look at what's going on with the chickens, I figured it would be a good moment to just sit down on the couch and discuss the whole concept of external parasites on chickens. So the first part I'm going to tackle is the most commonly asked question that I receive on Instagram and Facebook. I'll link those in the, down here uh, where we have discussions is if you can catch mites and lice from your birds. The answer to that is no. The type of lice and the type of mites that chickens get is very different from the ones people get. So there is no risk to you or to your family um, in regards to catching lice or catching mites from your birds. I would say that easily the second most common question I get is what's the difference between lice and mites? The biggest and most obvious difference between lice and mites are that lice are insects that you can see topically with the naked eye. Mites you actually can't see. Many live underneath the skin and they're so tiny you actually need a microscope to see them. The way you can tell you have mites versus lice is the symptoms with mites. Uh, scaly leg mites, for example, on chickens, which I think is probably one of the most common types you can get, it creates a scaly sort of almost psoriasis-esque buildup on the legs of the birds. You'll notice that the scales on their legs will actually become raised and have debris underneath and in between the scales that creates this sort of raised texture and effect. It's really gross. I'll put pictures and stuff up here in this corner, hopefully if my editing skills are good enough yet, uh, so that you can have a visual representation of what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's a lot easier to see. Uh, lice and mites can both cause feather loss. Um, they can cause weight loss. If it's uh, biting lice, it can actually cause anemia in your birds. So there's a lot of symptomology here of just weak, listless animals, patchy feathers, um, egg laying reduction. If their body is so focused on trying to battle what's going on as far as lice and mites go, your egg count will drop. So it's a really good idea to put hands on your birds, just like with any other livestock. I know that small animals like poultry can often get overlooked as far as this care goes on homesteads, but every couple of weeks at least, pick up a bird, it's great for the socialization anyway, um, and look near the vent, your chicken's bottom, and in the back of the neck feathers, and under the wings, and just make sure if you see any eggs or any bugs on your birds, check on their legs, just look for anything out of sorts. The material that lice produce and the egg clusters that they lay become really obvious when it's a bad infestation. Hopefully I'll have a picture right here to show you a really gross kind of intense version of that. And once you see it once, you'll never fail to recognize it again. It becomes really blatantly obvious when they have a bad infestation of lice or mites. Now the next step here is how on earth do we treat this? It's very unrealistic in most cases to take poultry to the vet. Most vets don't take care of livestock and even fewer livestock vets take care of poultry. Unfortunately, they are often considered in the communities as kind of a disposable animal that you don't really invest money in. Uh, I'm not a veterinarian. I I'm just doing what I feel is best for my animals. And unfortunately, there's also not a lot of medication specifically labeled for poultry. Much unfortunately, like the way it is with goats, us homesteaders have to use medications off label. So make sure you inform yourself on your choices. Personally, I use ivermectin poron for cattle. And I will link a product description unaffiliated in the description box below so you can check it out and look into it to see if it'll work for you. Uh, a lot of people use this medication. Uh, it's very simple and easy to use just like using flea drops for your cat or dog. 
It'll come in a big bottle, and I transferred my big, big bottle of ivermectin into a tincture bottle that I just purchased off, Iver, off of Amazon so that I can use the dropper and make it really easy to distribute to the birds. The dosage that I personally use for my birds is about two drops of the ivermectin on the skin directly, not on the feathers. It has to touch the actual skin of the animal. So under the wing is a really great and easy place to do it or lifting the feathers on the back of the neck and two drops, 10 days apart. So you're doing two, two treatments, 10 days apart, two drops each treatment. And I, anytime I've gotten lice, which in the last, I think six years I've had poultry, I think I've had it two or three times, one, one treatment round and they were gone. Uh, no chicken I've ever owned has ever been harmed by it. It's never caused any skin lesions. And I have found that it's been very successful. And I actually learned this from other people who've been in the business much longer than I have. But of course, that being said, do your research, do whatever works best for you, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. Maybe consult a veterinarian if you're lucky to have a bird savvy veterinarian near you. So with all of that out of the way, uh, I think I'll go ahead and grab our medications, go out, grab a bird, show you what I found on my birds and exactly how I go through the treatment process. Why? Why do you do this to me? How? Why? How? There was bailing twine across the gate. I was just coming out to give you breakfast. Could you not have waited for five minutes? Ah. Uh. You guys are so lucky, I love you. Okay, all the crazy escape artists have been locked up. I have my ivermectin, my hair up, and all dressed and ready for the day. Let's go deal off some chickens. Good morning, ladies. Come on out. I'm like, um, but the snow, I <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> all right, let's grab our first victim. <laughs> okay, this girl we can see it on pretty good, so <laughs> she looks so stinking cute. Ah, but do you see this little junk <laughs> down at the base of the feathers? They look like it almost looks like dandruff. Let's see if I, I almost had it there. Oh, you see that? You see those groupings right at the base of the feathers, right down here. That white stuff that kind of looks like dandruff <laughs> sticking on the base of the feathers. It is a very light and moderate version, barely there, early, early infection stage, compared to the stuff that I showed you in the images either linked below or comparison photo. So that's what you're looking for in the back of the nape of the neck or in the vent. And now we're going to treat her. Treatment's very easy. You got your little bottle of ivermectin. Some people might choose to keep it in the original container. I personally think dropper bottles are perfect. It looks like a little blue colored liquid. Oh, get your beautiful little face back here. So all you need to do is separate the feathers just like so, just like if you're checking, and put a couple of drops right there in the back of the neck. Easy peasy. Yep, come here. This is another reason why it's so good to handle your chickens regularly. One, two, all done. Yeah, it's cold. I don't like that. What is that for, lady? But this is another good reason why it's a really good idea to handle your birds regularly and, and keep them fairly tame because it makes catching them and medicating them so much easier. By holding them and petting them and harassing them several times a week, you're gonna make your job so much easier when there's actually an issue to be uh, managed. Now, if your chickens are a little more on the wild side, what I have done in the past is wait for them to all go roost at night and then come out in the dark with headlamps with someone as a helper and just scoop them up off of the perch one at a time when they're kind of in that catatonic state and do it then. So you can do it if they are more wild, um, but being able to have tame, chill chickens who are used to being handled really does make life a lot easier. Huh, don't you think? You're gonna feel all better. No more itchies here very soon. 
Yes. Um, and then while we're on the topic of lice and mites, there are some more natural <laughs> methods you can use as a preventative, but I have found that there are no natural or unmedicated uh, solutions once there's already an infestation to be had. A lot of people will use diatomaceous earth in the dust bathing area for their chickens. It does help somewhat as a preventative, but using too much diatomaceous earth because it's such a finely milled powder can also cause respiratory infections and chickens have really sensitive respiratory systems so you don't want to go overboard on that it can be good uh it, it basically it encourages grooming so much to the degree that they're able to self-regulate a lot so it will reduce your instances of infection but once you already have an infestation of lice and mites it's just easier and simpler and nicer to the animal to just break out the big guns and get the job done so that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for coming out and listening to me ramble about chickens. I love these little creatures so much. I hope that the information was helpful for you and that when you come across these issues, which is pretty much inevitable with birds, um, that this video helps you into making informed decisions about healthcare for your animals. Ah! She's over it and done with me. So on that note, please, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so that you get updates when we upload new videos. Have a great one.